President Trump on a tear this afternoon, tweaking the Republican chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Richard Burr of North Carolina, for issuing a subpoena to compel his oldest son, Donald Trump Jr., to testify after Trump Jr. refused to do so voluntarily. I was very surprised. I saw Richard Burr saying there was no collusion two or three weeks ago. My son's a very good person, works very hard. The last thing he needs is Washington, D.C. The Mueller report came out. That's the Bible. The Mueller report came out, and they said he did nothing wrong. The only thing is, it's oppo research. The oppo research is a clear reference to Trump Jr.'s meeting with a Russian lawyer promising dirt on Hillary Clinton in the summer of 2016, just a month before his father officially became the Republican nominee. The Mueller report, to be clear, did not say that Trump Jr., quote, did nothing wrong, as the president just said. Mueller and his team spelled out that episode in intricate detail and explained clearly that they did not charge Trump Jr. or anyone else involved in that meeting because it was not clear that they were aware that they should not have held the meeting and because they did not seem to obtain anything of clear value at the time. But, of course, no charges filed does not necessarily translate to, quote, did nothing wrong. The president, who also once claimed the Mueller report was a total exoneration, is now qualifying that a bit, claiming that special counsel Robert Mueller, quote, essentially cleared him on obstruction. To be clear, Mueller essentially kicked it to Congress to decide and stated clearly three times in the report that on the matter of obstruction, quote, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. That sentence appears in the Mueller report three times. We are in unprecedented times, and as CNN's Manu Raju now reports, sources close to Donald Trump Jr. say that the president's son is seriously considering defying the congressional subpoena, again, issued by the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee. The president's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., now weighing whether to obey a subpoena from the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee. If Donald Trump Jr. defies this subpoena, he ought to be jailed. A source tells CNN that Trump Jr. may take the fifth or not even show up, despite being compelled to do so by GOP Chairman Richard Burr and Democratic Vice Chairman Mark Warner. I was very surprised to see my son. My son's a very good person, works very hard. The last thing he needs is Washington, D.C. He could rather not ever be involved. The president today defended his son. My son testified for hours and hours. My son was totally exonerated by Mueller, who, frankly, does not like Donald Trump, me. A number of Senate Republicans also sided with Trump Jr., not their own GOP colleagues. I think uh, the rationale to keep the investigation of the Intelligence Committee open is, uh, is wearing, uh, wearing kind of thin now. If I were his lawyer, I'd be reluctant to put him back in this circus. But Burr refused to talk about the subpoena today. Would you hold someone in contempt for defying the subpoena? Any questions? Please. No. Because they seem to think your subpoena is voluntary. Is that, is your subpoena voluntary? While he testified previously on Capitol Hill, Trump Jr. declined to be interviewed by the special counsel, who did not subpoena him or charge him with the crime. But the Mueller report raised questions about his past testimony. When he told the Senate Judiciary Committee that in 2016, he only informed Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort that they planned to meet with Russians ahead of their 2016 meeting about possible dirt on the Clinton campaign. Yet the Mueller report quotes former deputy campaign chairman Rick Gates, saying Trump Jr. had announced at a meeting of top campaign officials and family members he had a lead on negative information about the Clinton Foundation. Plus, there are questions about the pursuit of the Trump Tower Moscow project ahead of the 2016 elections. There does seem to me to be troubling public evidence that Donald Trump Jr., has not been truthful about the family's business involvement in Russia. Democrats are bound to ask these same questions to Mueller if he appears before the House Judiciary Committee. Today, Trump said that decision is up to his attorney general, who has previously testified he has no issue with Mueller appearing. I'm going to leave that up to our very great attorney general, and he'll make a decision on that. Now, some of the president's closest and staunchest defenders today were saying some senators who are up for re-election 
in 2020 and who need the president's support and were siding with the president's son, including Tom Tillis, who's a Republican senator from North Carolina, the same state of Richard Burr. He said today, I personally believe the Democrats are just trying to keep this whole issue alive. But when I said, well, Richard Burr is the chairman of the committee, what about the criticisms of him? He said, I stand by my comment. You have to speak to Senator Burr. Jay? Hmm. All right, Manu Raja on Capitol Hill, thanks so much. Uh, let's bring in my experts. Uh, Nia, a, a very Trumpian uh, outburst in his uh, remarks earlier today, to, to say the least. That's right, a very wide-ranging outburst uh, in many ways, can, uh, you know, talking about all sorts of uh, topics, including uh, the subpoena uh, of his son, the Mueller report, North Korea, he talked about uh, Iran as well, Puerto Rico. So this was a president who we hadn't really heard from in, in this way. It was unexpected as well, because he was there uh, really to just talk about uh, the medical pricing and medical billing. And so there he was uh, holding court for, uh, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, uh, talking about uh, any, any number number of topics filled with untruths on any number of topics uh, as well. So, so we'll see. I, I do think it's interesting this, this, where we are now with this idea of Richard Burr uh, basically issuing uh, this subpoena, uh, you know, basically trying to compel Donald uh, Trump Jr. to testify and where this goes. We've so far seen Republicans really unwilling to stand up uh, to this president, certainly not willing to stand up uh, to one of his children uh, as well. So we'll see where this goes. I think so far, we've seen uh, Republicans, particularly somebody like Mitch McConnell, essentially say it's time to move on uh, from the Mueller report. But this is an interesting moment. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see where this goes and how Richard Burr, uh, if he's willing to, to, to sort of pursue this any further. Uh, and, and Kristen, uh, the, the criticism of Senator Burr from his fellow Republican senators uh, and Republican members of the House has been withering. There are lots of things about this presidency that divide the Republican Party, that put some members on one side and some members on the other side. This is no exception. Um, what I think is going to be interesting is to see when Senator Burr is further pressed on sort of why subpoena Donald Trump Jr., is the focus more on trying to understand more about the Trump campaign's role, which is the sort of thing that we know Democrats are quite interested in learning more about, believe they want to build upon in addition to what was already laid out in the Mueller report, or is the goal to get some sort of deeper understanding of Russian efforts to contact campaigns. Again, the Mueller report sort of found that Russians made many overtures toward the Trump campaign, but found sort of limited willing to, to willingness to do things with them. Are there things they think they can learn from Don Jr. about what the Russian efforts to reach out to them look like? That would seem to be a little more germane than kind of rehashing and continuing to build on, okay, well, what did the Trump campaign do? And Phil, we don't know specifically uh, what the members of the Senate Intelligence Committee want to question Don Jr. about. But we have an idea of a couple things that Don Jr. has said in his Senate Judiciary Committee testimony that was made public that have now been contradicted. Uh, one of the subjects is about the Trump Tower meeting and who he told ahead of time. Another one uh, is about how well briefed he was on the Trump Tower Moscow project. Take a listen to Michael Cohen uh, testifying before the House Oversight Committee uh, about who he had briefed um, and briefing uh, Ivanka and Don Jr. about the Trump Tower Moscow project. And who were the family members that you briefed on the Trump Tower Moscow project? Don Trump Jr. and Ivanka Trump. Okay. Now, were these in the regular course of business, or, or did the president or family request the briefings? This is in the regular course of business. Do you recall how many of these briefings there might have been? <laughs> Approximately 10. Approximately 10, but, but Phil, in his testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Trump Jr. said he was, quote, peripherally uh, aware of it. But I have to say, if there are two people contradicting each other, for one of them to be Michael Cohen, who is in prison right now for lying, that doesn't really, to me, and I'm just a layman, uh, spell like real trouble in terms of perjury, because Don Jr. could just say, Michael Cohen's a liar, that's why he's in jail. And so he should, I think, but, but I think you put your finger on what the critical issue here, it's, it's the second round we've done with this. Rudy Giuliani told us the outcome. He said with the President of the United States, he didn't want to put him in front of Mueller personally because he'd, he'd be afraid that the President would say something different than other witnesses would, said and therefore, would say and therefore the President would be in a bind. Now we have the second round of this where the President's son has done exactly the thing that Giuliani was worried the President would do and why the President refused to speak to Mueller. He said one thing to the committee, and clearly the committee learned in black and white through the Mueller investigation and the 450-page report 
that the facts from other people appear to be different. It, we're, the, the, the Capitol Hill is making this look political. Can you imagine being Richard Byrne looking at the side by side of the testimony in your committee and what the Mueller report found and, and, and discovering that one of your witnesses might have said something that was substantially untrue? What's Burr supposed to do? Say it doesn't matter if you speak the truth to the committee or not. This is, looks like pol it's politics on the Hill. It's like we got to talk to the guy about what the facts are. And I think Don Jr. rightly is going to say that makes me really nervous.